The former U.S. President Donald Trump surrendered to authorities in Georgia. He was formally arrested on charges that he conspired to overturn the 2020 election in that state. And the booking process has yielded a historic first, a mugshot of a former American president. The Fulton County Jail has released the mugshot of Trump and his jail records have been posted online as well. Trump has now departed the jail. The entire process lasted for about 20 minutes. Trump has fulfilled the $200,000 bail bond and other release conditions as well. He has denied any wrongdoing and called his criminal prosecution against justice. That's what he said. Take a listen. What has taken place here is a travesty of justice. We did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. And everybody knows it. I've never had such support. And that goes with the other ones, too. What they're doing is election interference. They're trying to interfere with an election. There's never been anything like it in our country before. This is their way of campaigning. And this is one instance, but you have three other instances. The 77-year-old former U.S. president is accused of conspiring with 18 co-defendants in trying to overturn the 2020 presidential election results in the key southern state. Dozens of his supporters were gathered outside the jail guarded under tight security ahead of his arrest. Trump did not have to undergo the indignity of having a mugshot taken during his three previous arrests this year. The first in New York on charges of paying hush money to a porn star Stormy Daniels. Next in Washington on charges of conspiring to upend his 2020 election loss to Democrat U.S. President Joe Biden. And third one in Florida for mishandling top secret government documents. Others facing racketeering charges in the alleged Georgia conspiracy. It includes Trump's former personal lawyer Rudy Giuliani and his White House chief of staff Mark Meadows. The booking of the billionaire real estate tycoon comes just hours after he skipped the primary debate, which featured eight of his rivals for the 2024 presidential nomination. A competition in which he remains the leading candidate despite his legal troubles. His presence in Georgia, though, was very brief. It is expected to, uh, to swipe the spotlight at least from his opponents in the aftermath of a debate in which other candidates sought to seize on Trump's absence to elevate their own presidential prospects. Trying to do on this issue is wrong to allow abortion all the way up to the moment of... I'm the only person on the stage who isn't bought and paid for, so I can say this. The climate change oh, well. agenda... For more on this, we're now being joined by correspondent Susan Tarani from New York. Hi, Susan. Now, Trump has been booked and released from the jail in election racketeering case. What is, what is the latest that you can tell us on the story? Yeah, it's a very sad day for the United States to have a former president's mugshot being taken, considering the fact that he's one of the most well-known people around the world and everyone knows that he's not a flight risk however unfortunately the lead prosecutor fanny willis who brought this georgia case against the former president uh, had campaigned on trying to get the president in a jailhouse and that mugshot as had alvin bragg the prosecutor here in new york as well so what we're seeing here right now is just such a polarized atmosphere on the one hand you have america's left that's ecstatic almost on ecstasy because they finally got this mugshot that they've been talking about for so long. But then you have uh, the Republicans and Trump's supporters who clearly see this as election interference, considering the fact that this is uh, current President Joe Biden's main rival and likely will be the Republican nominee. And they say that you know, uh, there was so much time for these uh, prosecutions to come forward and they bring the argument of First Amendment issues that's being violated in the Trump case. Uh, so, you know, extremely polarizing and we'll have to expect the Republicans to basically do the same, you know, when they have the opportunity. It's just it set a very bad and difficult precedent at this point, regardless of whether Trump will be found guilty or not, but the processing itself and the theatrics around it. Right, Susan, talking about the mugshot which you mentioned, it itself looks very interesting, rather. Trump looks angry even, and he claims innocence. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, he is very angry, but I will say just before that he was processed, a little before 7.30, Joe Biden used this day, his processing and handing him, turning himself into the Georgia court to send his donors a, a message saying that you see this will likely be my uh, opponent. Uh, this is the perfect time now that he's probably going to be guilty. This is, you know, according to that email, then you should donate to my campaign. But I wouldn't be surprised if, I mean, we'll see this mugshot everywhere uh, for those that oppose Donald Trump, you know, on t-shirts and mugs and everything. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Trump camp themselves use this mugshot, which is not a traditional mugshot, as you mentioned, uh, to campaign themselves, you know, turn this crisis into an opportunity as they have so far with these indictments. Right, Susan. Now, these conversations about Trump's fate, sometimes it gets lost in politics versus the law enforcement. He seems to be turning these legal hurdles into opportunities, gaining the sympathy of his supporters. What do you have to say on that? Yeah, that's absolutely how it is. And it's not just the sympathy of his supporters, but... You know, there are those that are watching from the sidelines and wondering whether or not questioning the results of an election uh, merited so much investigation, notably in Fulton County. Because remember, we know that uh, Stacey Abram had done it uh, and we know that Hillary Clinton had done it. We know that during the uh, Bush versus Gore uh, elections, you know, Florida was a huge state. Um, George Bush had done it as well. So, you know, this is something that has had precedent. So I think many are watching to see, you know, how far is too far in sort of ganging up on Donald Trump and his supporters, of course, stand by his side. He's he just got a 10 percent lead from the previous poll, which has 60 percent of the Republican Party at his side. But again, you know, there are those that are apolitical. They may look at this mugshot and say this is too far. You know, we don't want whether again, whatever happens in the courtroom, whether he's convicted or not, we just don't want an elected president that has a quote unquote mugshot or, you know, has been indicted so many times. So, like I said, it's just such a polarizing environment that it's hard to find a middle ground on this issue of Trump. Absolutely, Susan. Uh, a, a, a mugshot of a first former uh, U.S. president. We'll, of course, be tracking the story very closely here on Beyond. But thanks very much for joining us right now.